those who have accepted material bodies. All of those who have accepted material bodies. They are some yoga. Because of contact with the material body. Because of contact with the material body. The Anvani. Dualities. Dualities. Isvaralilaya. By the supreme will of the Lord. By the supreme will of the Lord. Sukham. Sukham. Happiness. Happiness. Sukham. Distress. Distress. Mriti. Mriti. Death. Death. Janma. Janma. Earth. Shabaha, curse, curse, anugraha, anugraha, favor, favor, eva, eva, certain, certain, and, and. Translation: Because of the actions of the supreme lords and external energy, the living entities are conditioned in contact with the material bodies. The dualities of happiness and distress, birth and death. Curses and favors are natural byproducts of this contact in the material world. Purport in Bhagavad Gita we find Maya Yakshina Prakriti Suryate Satyarajanam. The material world works under the direction of the goddess Durga, the material energy of the Lord, but she acts under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is also confirmed in the Brahma Sanghita 544. Shri Sti Siti Palaya Sadhana Shakya E Ka Chaye Vayasya Bhuvanani Vipati Durga. Durga, the goddess Parvati, the wife of Lord Shiva, is extremely powerful. She can create, maintain, and annihilate any number of universes by her sweet will. But she acts under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, not independently. Krishna is impartial. But because this is the material world of duality, such relative terms as happiness and distress, curses and favors are created by the will of the Supreme. Those who are not Narayana Para, pure devotees, must be disturbed by this duality in the material world, whereas devotees who are simply attached to the service of the Lord are not at all disturbed by it. For example, Haidas Thakur was beaten with a cane in 22 bazaars. But he was never disturbed. Instead, he smilingly tolerated the beating. Despite the disturbing dualities of the material world, devotees are not disturbed at all, because they have fixed their minds on the lotus feet of the Lord and concentrate on the holy name of the Lord. They do not feel the so-called pains and pleasures caused by the dualities of this material world. Dehinam desam yoga dvanva nishvara lilaya sukham dukham vichir janla shabo nukra eva cha. Because of the actions of the Supreme Lord's external energy, the living entities are conditioned in contact with the material bodies. The dualities of happiness and distress, birth and death, curses and favors are natural byproducts of this contact in the material Worlds. Om Magyamatiranda Shakiranda Nasalakya Chakshumi Tam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru De Namaha Ukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Bangai Tikirin Yakri Gataham Bande Sipuram Dina Tainam Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Kristaya Jurish Srimati Bhakti Tiranda Swami Tinamin Namaste Saraswati Deva Golavani Prashadi Shri <laughs> Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. So, uh, isn't it interesting this verse is about uh, Durga and her influence of the material world? I was just in old for a couple of days. Uh, I had a lecture at uh, one, of, you know, a the one, one theological faculty at the university in Oms where they had invited me to actually speak about Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and about they had they 
det her med the inviting some different speakers. Actually, they only invited me and then one atheist and one Christian. I mean, I was there this Monday and then there'll be an atheist next Monday and afterwards there'll be a Christian next Monday. But they, you know, they, they want kind of different representative for different worldviews. So in kind of, you know, explain, you know, what, what are the answers to the big questions in life? Where, uh, where does everything come from? Uh, what, what is a human being? Uh, I think what is the purpose of life? How do we, how do we know something is right and wrong? These were some of the questions I had. And also, you know, and why, in particular, why are you convinced about the, of this particular world? So they invited me to speak there on behalf of Hinduism and pantheism. Because uh, I know, thought I was a pantheist. What's that? Yeah, what is a pantheist? It's actually my body, basically. Hmm. Those who think uh, God is everything. Everything is God and God is everything. And, and they, they had the idea that Hinduism is, you know, is the pantheist. And uh, which means they, they basically think it's my body philosophy. That's what they know about it. Some other they, they thought that I, because I, you know, I gave, uh, over a year ago, I gave the same place, I, I gave my presentation on Darwin and utility design, and like that, but it seemed to have liked. And, uh, and they are also, I mean, I, of course, in those contexts, I don't speak about Krishna consciousness, but I, also, I don't hike when I don't hike Krishna, but I don't, you know, it's not something that, it's just like if, you know, if I was invited to give a, Lecture on, for example, chemistry, uh, and I don't, you know, and I'm not supposed to, you know, speak about so called my religion. So, but also, I'm not hiding it, so that's kind of the approach when I give lectures on evolution like that. Uh, but this, but they, someone they, had, they, they knew I was a high Christian, and that's why they invited me probably for this lecture also. And, uh, and so they thought I was a pantheist. So, uh, anyway, uh, I explained some of the differences actually that both at Veda, Vedanta, I mean, this is my art philosophy, that everything, ultimately everything is one, and the difference between you know, God's individuality and ceases to exist, our individuality ceases to exi exist, it just become oneness like that. So, I explained that that part of so called Hinduism. Of course, I also explained that you know, Hinduism is an interesting thing. That does not exist. Uh, which, uh, you know, and then I got into, you know, what does the word mean? It doesn't really mean anything, and so on. And, and explain that actually the real, the better term is called Vedic religion. And then I use that for the other words. And then I, of course, I was explained that there is, but actually there are two strands within Vedic religion. There is the monistic, uh, which is actually kind of Buddhistic influenced, and then there is, you know, what is actually original, uh, actually, which actually is monotheistic, there is one God, and he is, you know, he is a person, and he is Krishna, and uh, he is, uh, you know, and he is the cause of all causes, that there is no other, I mean, there is not, nothing else be, be, behind Krishna, nor does Krishna become anything, and he actually is the, uh, the, un, the causeless, you know, the causeless cause of all causes. So, you know, uh, but also there, we uh, somehow got into speaking about, a little about uh, Durga or the material, material energy. Uh, because they had the idea of uh, the devil, Satan. And uh, God is, you know, he is God's enemy. And, uh, and somehow uh, God has this competitor. And, uh, and now we are influenced by Satan. Actually, we are quite innocent. It's not our fault. But Satan is influencing us. And therefore, there is evil in this world, and therefore we are acting evilly. But uh, it's not really, you know, and, uh, and, and, and also we are, you know, we, we are suffering. As the, the suffering is because of the influence of the devil. Uh, we are actually innocent. 
So uh, some of it, it's, it's an idea that God is not in complete control or something like that. Because, uh, yeah. Anyway, I didn't get into criticizing Christianity. I didn't feel that that's not why I was there. It was actually quite a nice exchange, you know, very respectful and like that. And they, they, you know, they, they were, I think they were appreciative and respectful to our position and understood it to a large degree. Um, but then I got into it because they had this idea of uh, the devil being against God and he somehow another has got control over this world. And then one, one day, of course, when Jesus comes back, then he will, you know, he will really again, you know, come to the devil and again establish the kingdom of God, something like that. But uh, I explained to, to them at least that, that, that there is no such concept as the devil in Vedic philosophy. But there is Maya. And Maya has this, has in one sense, actually they, they're confusing uh, Maya with the devil, it seems like. And, uh, I think that Maya is against Krishna, but here we hear actually Maya is not against, Abdur is not against Krishna. She's Krishna's agent, uh, but she's simply keeping conditioned souls uh, within the bondage of the material world because it, uh, we are not qualified to go to the spiritual world, just like prisoners in a, you know, in a prison are not qualified to be out in free society. So therefore there are prison walls that keep them under lock. Uh, so the prisoners might think that the prison guards, they're evil, you know, or the police is evil. And this is generally what you, you know, cr criminals say, they will think, oh, these evil police and like that. The police, uh, they're not evil. They are, as much as they, you know, fulfilling a very necessary function. Um, by the, the state needs that function as much as they need university professors and garbage collectors and like that. We also need uh, police, police force. And uh, the government does not see anything evil about the police or that the police is in competition with the government or anything like that. They, 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 they are servants of the government, servants of the state. So Durga is the same, same thing. She's actually a servant of Krishna. And, uh, but the role that, you know, is assigned to the devil is found, you know, she has that, it's a, she is a, you, you may, do you know this, where Jesus is out in the desert and he's, I think he's fasting for 40 days. And, uh, I don't know if it's also for, from water, but that's an issue, but he's fasting for 40 days. Uh, so, uh, you know, he was, so, uh, and then after that, then actually the Satan appears in front of him and then he uh, is telling him, you know, just see, you can have this, you know, you can have everything, this world is mine, uh, you know, with all the opulence and all the wealth of this world, I'll give it to you, you can have it. And then uh, Jesus, he says, you know, uh, how the English translation is, he says, we bought Satan, <laughs> you know. We bought Satan. I uh, think that's how it's in English, right? Uh, English, like, you know, no. Step back or step on. Yeah, get lost. Mm -hmm. I don't think, it, but that's, that's too much street language. I mean, that's not a problem. Here it is. Isn't it get behind the Satan? Get behind. I don't know. Not, not in the Danish. Bible. I know, but I heard that quote before, but maybe different translation. Yeah. But at least, you know, get away from the Satan. So, 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 the, so, of course, Jesus, he, he passes the test. He's not attracted by the devil. Uh, but they are actually uh, the same function that the devil has here, being a tempter. You know, he's tempting conditioned souls with the lures of the material world. This is actually Maya's function. She is tempting. Oh, she, she's actually the temp tempter for for the sake of testing us, is actually those souls who are qualified to go back home, back to God, and are all tempted by the allurements of Maya. Kaidas Tampur is mentioned here as an example, that he was not at all tempted by, you know, Kaidas you know, Tampur was uh, 
tested by Maya herself personally. But he was not at all tempted. Uh, Maya's taco was, uh, I mean, it happened twice, but uh, you know, I, you know it, 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 there was a story of a prostitute who came and for three nights tried to tempt Maya's taco. Later on, Maya they herself came and did the same thing over three nights. Haida's Thakur uh, was chanting Haida's Thakur, his Namacharya, great devotee of Lord Chaitanya, he was chanting his uh, 192 rounds every day, 300,000 holy names, that's a lot. <laughs> we can, you know, 60 rounds for us, it's, it's like climbing Mount Everest every morning. But uh, 192 rounds he was chanting every day, so he, he's, he's a Namacharya. The child of chanting the holy name. Mm. And uh, so yeah, he was chested twice, once by a common, a very beautiful prostitute, and second time by Durga Devi herself came and did the same thing on him. Uh, he was sitting in a in a beautiful cave by the by the Ganges. You know, it was it was night, it was moon, full moon, it was very beautiful. Full moon was you know, reflecting on the, on the waves of the Ganges, and everything was like sparkling. And it was springtime, and the smells, and it was, you know, something like that. And then, then my dear herself came, uh, you know, and came and uh, visited Haida's Thakur and presented herself in front of Haida's Thakur. And, uh, you know, it's, it's described, you know, uh, exhibition poses, feminine poses that they you know, would disturb the mind of the greatest philosopher, I think that's how it's expressed. And uh, so he was openly asking, you know, I would like to, you know, associate with you. And I asked Taco there, I said, yeah, I, I will, I will agree to that, but I have to finish my rounds first. First I have to finish my rounds. And uh, so he began, he was chanting the whole night through because 192 rounds. It takes some time after all. He was chanting and chanting and chanting. And finally he was getting morning and he was still chanting. So she had to leave again. She came back the same night. Uh, same thing again. And the third night came. And then at the end of the third, third morning, uh, she, she, she uh, I mean, let's just say, but you know, you're cheating me. You never finished with chanting. And I just talked and said, What can I do? I'm taking a vow. I cannot, I cannot give it up. And then she actually revealed who she actually is. She says, you know, I am actually the illusory potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I've been able to attract everyone's minds, even I've been able to be built to Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, but only your mind have failed to attract. And then, uh, and then actually, she begged for the mercy of Haida's Thakur that she could chant the High Krishna Mantra. And he, so he actually initiated Durga herself into chanting the High Krishna Mantra. Krishna's Kaviraj in the Titanic Tetamata gets into his discussion a little about, you know, because it might set, set, sound unbelievable to many that, you know, that Durga herself came and actually was you know, initiated by Haida's Thakur, but he, he did some, you know, Reasons why I think we should we should understand this is actually true. Um, he uh, explains that actually all the other uh, demigods actually came at the time of Lord Chaitanya to take part in the Sankirtan movement. You know, you know, it's uh, because when the Supreme Lord he actually incarnates in this world, it's a big event, and demigods actually come. You know, it's even though we think this is just on this Earth planet, but the Earth planet becomes very very special. And Krishna himself incarnates as he did with Lord Chaitanya. So all the demigods, uh, they were lining up to some or other taking birth as associates of Lord Chaitanya, or some or other be connected. So there should be nothing astonishing about it also that Durga herself, she wants also to have, take part in this uh, Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya. So Krishna's Kavirasi explains it like that. So I mean, we should not. We should not doubt that actually she did, did like that. But uh, so anyway, this this verse here is about Durga. It's actually Shiva speaking speaking to Durga herself and 
explaining her what, what she is doing. Um, it says here, as whole material world, Bayata, Sing, Prakriti, Suicide, Satyaratara, the material world works under the direction of the goddess Durga, the material unity of the Lord. But she acts under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that was actually this point that it's not, she's not the enemy of Krishna, but she's completely, she's the completely loyal enemy of Krishna and uh, his servants. So, uh, uh, well, I thought of mentioning other point also there. Why does Krishna act like that? Why, you know, why does he use Durga for? Uh, uh, creating and destroying this material world. Like I said, it's Tristi, Siti, Palaya, Sadhana, Shakti, Eka, that means she's, she's actually the direct executive demigoddess who is uh, in charge, you know, who is creating, containing, and destroying this material world. Uh, why uh, does Krishna do it like that? Uh, someone might ask, because actually, if we, if we, if we, you know, there's so much information here in the in the Bhagavatam and in the Vedic literature about uh, the how this material world is creation and the creation process and all the personalities involved in creating, creating this material world and uh, also you know, who, how it's been maintained and how it's been annihilated and so on. There's so many. It's not, it's not that, because often we hear, again we speak about Christianity, uh, there the information is that God created the world and did it in seven days, uh, which is a, in one sense, a quite a you know, poetic and beautiful way of describing it, but it's, it's not very, very much detailed. Uh, and often they, they have the idea that God created the world ex nihilo, is the technical term, out of nothing. I mean, other words, they like poof, and the world was there. That's how it created it. Often, and Christians have this idea. This is how God is creating. Uh, so someone might 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 ask, why did God not just create poof like that? Why does he why why does he uh, uh, create for such a uh, complicated process with so many personalities involved? And the answer is, uh, yeah, he could he could create also like poof just like there, and the world would be there. Uh, why not? I mean. No one can say he didn't do it like that, or he could not do it like that. Of course, he can. Uh, but then again, he chose to do it like that. Even in one sense, always ask if God does something, why did he do it like that? Why did he, didn't he do it differently? But he chose to do it like that. Uh, but also, there are good reasons why he's, he's doing it like that, why he's involving so many personalities. Just like Brahma is uh, the direct creator of this material world. And um, of course, as I said, Dorga is also created, but she's in the a little lower and more, you know, it's, they, they have different functions. And they, uh, it's, a, it's a, actually a big cooperation for creating this world. But Brahma is a, he's a first being in this material world, he is, uh, and he gets a role of the direct creator. He's kind of the practical engineer. Krishna is behind Brahma is a practical engineer creating this material world. So why, I want to ask, why doesn't Krishna do it himself? Because uh, he, he could do it, he doesn't really need Brahma to create this material world. Uh, so one might ask, why does he do it like that? And the answer is basically, I mean, because uh, Brahma needs to, needs to do something, otherwise he wouldn't have any service. And, uh, and, and like Brahma, like everyone else, he needs some service to do. We all need some service. This is our this is our nature. Uh, we uh, we have we have we have to have something to do. Otherwise, uh, I mean, it is just our nature to be active and to be serving. And uh, if we want to, like, if, if if we are supposed to again become involved in Krishna's direct devotional service, then I mean, there has to be something for us to do. So therefore, there's a universe. Brahma is a, is a, is a jiva like we are, and uh, he gets, so, so, so since he needs something to do, then Krishna says, well, you create this universe. Then. Uh, 
on my behalf, provide is an extremely qualified jiva. He's the most qualified jiva, so he's qualified to act as the creator on behalf of Krishna. You know, because actually the creator, the, 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 you can only be in trust of something, so someone you can really trust. You know, he has to be someone who's completely reliable because, because everything, so many things depend on how that is actually properly created. So Brahma, he has a qualification. Um, and uh, because he has a qualification and because he actually needs something to do, uh, therefore Krishna, he uh, lets him be a secondary creator. And that principle applies all the way down. Uh, why uh, doesn't Krishna do it himself? He could. But, uh, you know, everyone needs uh, to be engaged in Krishna's service. Therefore, he simply, you might say, Krishna, he steps back and then he lets his devotees and his aspiring devotees and actually everyone uh, be involved in, you know, doing, performing many different functions that need to be done in this material world. It is simply Krishna's mercy that he arranges for that he makes sure there is service for everyone to do. Uh, because what else would be, you know, we would be lost. Like what Prabhupada said about, actually about Bhajan Uttak, or he himself was uh, actually powerful enough as an Acharya to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. So why didn't he do it? Probably because he lived in foster group. So he would have some service. Uh, or Prabhupada, you know, why didn't Prabhupada spread the consciousness fully all over the world. He did actually, uh, but still, there's so, so much left to do. Why? So we have something to do. That's, uh, I think, as, as I said, that's, that's, that's ultimately the real point. Why are so many personalities involved in the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material world? Uh, because everyone needs to uh, have some service according to their nature, to according to the conditioned nature. And to the inclination. And, uh, oh, why doesn't, like for example, Krishna himself, uh, why, why did he, uh, why didn't Krishna just rid the world of all the unnecessary military forces? Why did he use Arjuna? Again, because Arjuna needs that service in order to actually establish his relationship with Krishna. Relationship is established through service. Um, so Arjuna, he, uh, he, he was uh, involved as, you know, as Krishna's instrument uh, for, really for the sake of uh, establishing his relationship to Krishna. Of course, Arjuna had already a very deep relationship to Krishna, but Krishna wanted uh, the relationship to Arjuna uh, strengthen and make much more intimate than it was before. And therefore he arranged, I think I mentioned that, I mentioned that point before, isn't it? With, uh, you know, this, that, you know, like, one of the deepest friendships established, uh, like in the, in the practical world, is actually between two uh, soldiers who have been in war together. Uh, they, 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 they were in war together, they were fighting against it, it was life and death. Uh, they were depending on each other, so maybe they even saved, their, saved their life, each other's lives several times. And uh, the, the friendship, that, you know, the, the, the closeness they experienced in that situation afterwards, they'll never experience anything having such close relationships to any, anyone else. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a a demanding situation brings, uh, in this case, two soldiers so close to the uh, Christian one to, to have that close relationship with Arjuna. That's why he 